I'm Jesse McAnally. And I'm Brianna Jones. And welcome to this super special bonus episode of Musicals for Cheese, where me and Bree look at something fucking terrible. <laughs> yeah, why'd you do this to me? Okay, so one of the one things that I regret not being able to do properly the first time around was Love Never Dies. The sequel to The Phantom of the Opera was one of our earliest episodes because I wanted it checked off the list, but that also meant you didn't have to watch it. (laughs) You're right. I didn't have to. But since Andrew's gone for a quick hiatus, um, he'll be back soon. um, And I figured what better time to force this upon you than right now? Perfect timing, because you know what? I ran out of my antidepressants and, you know, oh. I, was, I was thinking, what can I do to make myself feel better? And it was watch this. Hell yeah. Today, we're talking <laughs> about Love Never Dies. Cue the music, Brie. Love never dies. Love never falters. One sweet has So Love Never Dies is a romantic musical with music by Andrew Lloyd Webber and lyrics by Glenn Slater and a book by Ben Elton, Frederick Sorth, Forsyth, and Ben Slater. Um, it is the sequel to the long-running 1986 musical The Phantom of the Opera and was loosely based on Frederick Forsyth's 1999 novel The Phantom of Manhattan, which is very bad. Um, very, very bad novel. Even worse than this musical, if you can imagine it. I can um, So, Brie. Okay. What is your experience with The Phantom of the Opera proper? I was telling you earlier, I watched it maybe anywhere from 12 to 15 years ago, the original. I don't really remember it all that well, uh, and that's really all I can tell you. I know what happens. I Googled it just to make sure I remembered what happens. Do your best summation based on your Google and remembering, like, for what you had to go into Love Never Dies with. Okay, um, what I had to go in with... Love Never Dies. I had to look it up after. But anyway, what I went in thinking, I was like, okay, I remember there was Christine and the Phantom. And I <laughs> All rem- right, we're doing good so far. <laughs> and for some reason, I remembered it more like Beauty and the Beast, right? <laughs> That's how I remembered it. Like, she ends up in this place. You know, he's not letting her leave type of deal. <laughs> And but they fall in love in the end, and that's kind of how I remember. No, it. no, that was not what happened. Yeah, I know I was wrong. Okay, but that's what I went in <laughs> thinking. It must have been very confusing to you at first, because immediately it starts with him being like, "Man, I miss you," and you're like, "What? Why? Why she miss? Why is he miss her? Didn't y'all fall in love?" Yeah, I figured it out along the way. Okay, okay. And how would you describe the plot of Love Never Dies? Chaotic. A little crazy. Um, there's a lot what going happens? on. Okay. Um, so you have the Phantom who has faked his death, apparently, for the last 10 years of Christine. 10 years. That's an important number. 10 years. Very important. Christine has gone off, gotten married, has a child. Uh, and I guess you could say she's in this loveless marriage. Maybe loveless, uh, because her husband is a drunk and uh, has gambled away all their money. And so the they're off to Coney Island, from Paris to Coney Island, because Christine is going to sing and they're going to pay off all their debts. And this is a deal they have. Um, but behind all this is the Phantom. Ooh, spooky. spooky. <laughs> Okie spooky is right. He, he's uh, just there. <laughs> he's not even the one that invites her there. She just happens to be coming. <laughs> and he takes what? advantage. No, I thought it was under a pseudonym. No, Oscar all... Hammerstein invited her. And then he's like, I know what Oscar Hammerstein's paying you and I will double it. It was, it was just a happenstance. I missed this. I thought he was I thought he was working under a pseudonym. OK. I mean, people call him Mr. Y throughout Mr. it because. Yeah mystery and it only works if you're reading it if you just say mr y it doesn't really work right okay i'm under i'm i'm understanding this more now that we're having this discussion this is great (laughs) um okay and then you kind of have these these other plots going on meg gear is it geary jiri jiri meg jiri she um and her mom and her mom yes are kind of handling the show's at Coney Island. Uh, and How would you describe the music for the performances? I can't. 
Because in they're universe, they're all the same in my mind. In universe, the Phantom is supposed to have written all those songs, right? <laughs> like, can Love you imagine never dies. him? Love never dies, and the bathing suit babe or whatever beach babe are two very different songs. Yes, they were not written by the same person. I mean, in our world, it still was, <laughs> and that person is Andrew Lloyd Webber. Well, Andrew, you fucked up. I just imagine him with his torrid face and like all that. He's just like. Bathing beauty <laughs> on bathing the beach. Beauty. <laughs> bathing <laughs> beauty. <laughs> like, and she'll be taking off clothes slowly, and then at the end, the parasol will pop up and we'll just miss the titties. <laughs> and there's stripes, and there's polka dots. Stripes. <laughs> and polka dots. And like, yes. Um. So they're doing, they're, they're putting on the shows. Yes. Um, they're putting on the shows. Meg is like, notice me, Phantom. Uh, and Phantom Senpai, notice me. <laughs> yes, and then her mom's like, he's never gonna notice you. Listen, Christine's on her way, uh, and he's 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 just never gonna notice you. Um, and then she goes off. Well, she ends up having like a total meltdown, uh, which results in well, spoiler alert: Christine's dead. Because she accidentally shot her. Yeah, because she was trying to do a murder-suicide with Christine's child. Right. And there's the other plot going on here. The kid <laughs> is the Phantom because he's 10 years old. He's 10 years old. Y- yeah. And he he can play chopsticks. Yes. Yes, he can play chopsticks. Which means he's um, super musical. And yeah, there's just a lot going on. Yes. Um, so in the original book, which was commissioned by Lloyd Webber for Frederick Forsyth to write, same things, basically, Phantom and Coney Island. I think that's a good idea. That's a fun mm-hmm. idea, fun location. Um, however, um, the reason why we know it can only be the Phantom's kid and not Raoul is Raoul lost his testicles in a duel. <laughs> So he is. There was no mention of this. Yes, that was cut out of the musical for obvious reasons of it being really stupid. There was no Meg or Madame Giry in the book. It was like a bunch of other characters, but it still results in Christine getting shot because, okay. you know, woman can't have agency and die. Must yeah. die. Must um, die. So Raoul was character assassinated in this musical. Hmm. He was like the swashing man coming in to save the day in the first one. And here he's just like, I'm an alcoholic that spent my wife's money. La, 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 la. Why does she love me? Yeah, that would have been a good song. <laughs> he's like you sauntering in. You should have the music. <laughs> um, so was there anything that you liked? I know we're going to be negative for about this. What did you like about this? Oh, I mean, the pro shot I watched was shot very well and i know you told me it was done like 10 years ago yep and it is still the absolute best pro shot ever done like which is sad because it's for such a shitty musical like it there's so much visually going on the camera shoots it perfectly it looks like a film despite it being a stage show like it is good yeah it is it one is. of it's the best very good i had high hopes going in yeah, um, that overture when they you see like all the freak shows and all that going yeah. on, um, that looks good. Um, Anna O'Byrne as Christine, absolutely incredible. She adds a lot of agency and voice yes. to a character that doesn't have much. Um, she tries to bring as much to it as she can. She's fantastic. She's one of the best real Christines ever, like in the proper musical, but she's also very good in this. Um, everyone's voices sounds very nice. Um, yes, they do. They all sound wonderful. Sharon Millerchip, um, with a very thankless role of Meg, is performing the hell out of it and trying her best to, like, add dimension to the actions she's committing. I would agree. Um, the, the, the role isn't doing her any favors, but she's really, really trying. Is there a song you like, maybe? Oh, I like the, um... The hindsight one. That Devil was a take good the one. hindmost. Devil take the highmost. Yes. We've a son, our bond secure. Are you sure? What? Are you so sure? What do you mean? Such a child, strange to see, talented, musical. Is he more you or me? 
Which one do you find most? You lie! Yet no doubt one could doubt your wife ever would doubt your son. Such a man. Everything you're insane. Now we so play, now I play for, for your my life. life. Devil take the hindmost. I very much enjoyed that song, but probably because it sounded um different. Because it sounded like a song that belongs in the Phantom of the Opera? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, there's three songs that sound like they belong in the Phantom of the Opera. It's the opening number, Till I Hear You <laughs> Sing. Like, that feels like, okay, yeah. And that was the first one they released all the way back in 2009 um, from this musical, where it's like, oh, this might be good. You know, this this could work. I, I can hear this coming together and becoming a thing. Um, mm-hmm. Then the show came out, and nope. Um <laughs> Then there's um, Beauty Underneath, which sounds like a rock and roll Phantom song. Yes, which I liked. It was good. In a vacuum, that song can be cool. I agree. Then Devil Take the Hindmost, which what they're doing in the song is garbage, but the song itself is pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. The the, the premise of the song is terrible. The song itself cool yeah we didn't even bring up that literally the phantom goes behind christine's back and makes a bet for her life with her ex-husband or her husband yeah no agency no agency (laughs) whatsoever (laughs) yeah (laughs) um so what did you think of the you look better with the lights off song huh um (laughs) <laughs> the song where we fucked multiple times we have to tell the audience we fucked oh a bunch <laughs> but it was okay because the, the, there was no moon so I couldn't see your face yeah I blocked that out what? Um, <laughs> that, how do you block off that... the most insane part of the show I don't know I don't know I don't remember that happening I don't remember this song oh how, how about I read some lyrics for you please do please do like, I vaguely remember it happening, but I also remember them singing, like, four songs around that one song. Oh, yeah, so, that, that that song is six minutes long, and it's followed up by a four-minute song that means nothing. Yeah. Um. So, the, 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 the chorus, the repeated per- verse, is describing how they fucked. Um, right. So, like... Like, we introduced it. Once there was a night beneath the moonless sky, too dark to see a thing, too dark to even try. You know, because I'm so ugly, it'll be easier to fuck me. Um, I stole to your side to tell you I must go. I couldn't see your face, but sent you even so. So those are the two verses. Then the chorus. And I touched you, and I felt you, and I heard those ravishing refrains. The pulse of your, the music in your pulse, the singing in your Ah, veins. And I held you, and I touched you, and embraced you, and I felt you. Yes, the singing in the veins. I remember that. Um, but yeah, and hold on. And I kissed you and caressed you and the world around us fell away. We said things in the dark we never dared to say. Mm-hmm. Um, where's again and then again? Because <laughs> I know that's in there somewhere. Um, and I caught you and I kissed you and I took you and caressed you with the need to urge and to deny. And nothing mattered them except for you and I again and then again beneath the boomless sky. They fucked. They raw dogged eight or nine times that night to create that stupid kid. And he was shocked. He was so shocked. He's like, oh, the kid? It's mine? <laughs> After I r- free blasted into his mom 20 times? I get it again? <laughs> Like, A, stamina, good on you, fandom. Seriously. For a guy that never gets it. And she doesn't make it sound like he was bad, but because it was he was obviously bad. Let's be clear. Was he? I mean... I don't know. She went back for more. I guess. So that was the night before she was <laughs> married. <laughs> oh, fuck. Like... You came and found where I hid on the night before you were wed. Like, ah, uh, yes. Cringe as fuck. Can you imagine being that hung up on a guy that the day before you get married, it's like, I'm gonna let him raw dog me. <laughs> um, no, I'm too much of an anxious person. I'd, yeah. I f- I'd be afraid. I'd be afraid. <laughs> Especially if that guy was a confirmed murderer. <laughs> also, like, I'm just about to get married. To the man I supposedly love. Also, how did she know where he was? Like, he just says, you came and found where I hid. How the fuck does she know? Right. Like, that that's glossed over and no one brings that up. How did she find him? I don't know. I mean, to be fair, he just walked in her room out of... 
with a fog machine up his ass with a and all fog that. Machine. I mean, do yeah, like he and he was in the mirror at times. I mean, this man is anywhere and everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Huh. <laughs> so uh, you didn't yeah. like that song? <laughs> no, I, I like the- I said, that was the one I kind of forgot about. It is so long and so stupid. It is. I do remember thinking this is a very long song. Um, so we talked about all the things that were good. Mm -hmm. What is so bad about this? There is so much bad about this, but what do you think are the worst parts? Oh, the story, um, is bad. Part of me kind of likes this better than the first Phantom. Do you? Why? The first Phantom is so boring throughout most of it. At least this is engaging and stupid. (laughs) Like, this I watch as a comedy and have a blast. That first one, that that first True. two-thirds are real rough, and then it's interesting, then another two-thirds are real rough. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it took, like, the first 40 to 50 minutes to actually get into the plot. Yeah, whereas here, we're right away. We're getting into it. This this musical wastes no fucking time, in all fairness to it. True. Like, True. we don't have characters to set up, but the characters but, to set up are garbage. Okay, listen. I looked up the Wikipedia page before I started, and they said, because I was like, is this a sequel? Yes. Like, and it said, yeah, but no. That's literally what the Wikipedia page said. <laughs> is that a direct quote? Yeah, but no? Yeah, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Listen, it was like, you don't have to see the first Phantom. Oh, that's what Andrew Lloyd Webber said. <laughs> yeah, but it's, but it's clearly a sequel. Yeah, there's okay. no way you're going to understand what the fuck's going on in this without at least mild context from the first one. Right, because I was even having a hard time and I saw the first one years ago. Yeah, Andrew but... Lloyd Webber's full of shit. <laughs> I, I know. Yeah. Dare we talk about the Phantom's performance in this movie? <laughs> the gentleman, Ben Lewis... Very talented vocalist. Every face he pulls, like he is making a face. He is performing to the back of the audience when there's a camera three feet away. It's very true. Like there are so many ridiculous shots of him where he is. (laughs) His eyes are full open. His mouth is full pout. (laughs) He's got a mask on and he's trying to show that every emotion through that mask. It's true. I thought his eyes were going to pop out of his head a couple times. Especially to how naturalistic everyone else is playing it, like Anna O'Byrne, especially Sharon yeah. Miller Chip, who's like nailing it. Like, she's really doing a good job for like. Mm-hmm. Um, he is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like if, if we kind of talk about Dear Evan Hansen, same type of, same thing, right? Yeah. Like, Ben Platt is just like overacting. He's acting because he's used to being on a stage where you know when there's a camera in front of you it should be a little bit more natural more subtle Mm -hmm. and yeah sometimes it works um depending on the role this was not that role yeah so the weirdest part of this like how does meg go from zero to murderer christine comes back yes and See, at first I thought she was excited that Christine was back, which she probably was. Okay. It's her friend. Let's pause for a second. So, in the original London version, what we're watching now is a very heavily revised Australian production. Okay. In the original London version, it's basically stealing the structure from Phantom. You do not see the Phantom until 25 minutes in. Um, He sings till I hear you sing. 25 minutes in after like... A bunch of like performances from Meg and all that, and then he sings till I hear you sing, and then Christine comes in thirty eight forty minutes in, and then 
all of that. But when she finds out Christine's coming, she's like, oh, that cunt, I hate her. Uh, why is she coming here? And then people are like, wait, why would she do that? And then that was one of the big revisions is figuring out Meg's character, having her be excited. But then the story doesn't really work <laughs> to get to the natural conclusion of her doing a murder. Right. You're, you're right. Yeah. So she at first she does seem excited. Uh, and then what Chris she finds out Christine is singing the same night as her yes correct yes and then so she becomes upset because the phantom doesn't notice her like he notices Christine yeah and then what she went all out oh she went all out on the performance of bathing beauty (laughs) bathing beauty i'm never gonna remember the name it's always going to be the bathing suit babe uh and the strip show let's be clear (laughs) and she comes out and she's talking to her mother and she's like mommy did you see my performance like oh i bet you he thought it was so great and she's like yeah he wasn't like the phantom wasn't even he wasn't even there he was with christine in her room like he didn't even see you and then she lost it i mean it's cringe as fuck (laughs) I mean, there is some context for why she went so crazy. Yes. Um, it is probably one of the more subtler things in the Australian version. Um, it is less subtle in the London version, um, where it is implied that in order to get all the money for all the stuff that Madame Jury is talking about, um, Madame Jury hoard out her daughter to sleep with men um, to get the financing. Oh. Um, so when she's got the gun to Gustav at the end, bef- when she's like, here's the big finish, and now the, the show, that part. Yeah. Um, all right. Always wondered how to make you watch. Well, watch me now. I took a little trip to Coney Island. I took a little trip because of you. I did as mother said and followed where you led and tried to do what little I could do. Well, here's the way it works in Coney Island. They make you pay for every little crumb. I gave what they would take. I gave it for your sake. Now look at me and see what I become. Bathing beauty on the beach, bathing beauty in her dressing room, bathing beauty in the dark, on their laps, in their arms, in their beds. Like <gasps> that, that is. I would kill Gustav too. Like that is the uh, development we have there. And it's almost set up like a twist, but you can barely hear the lyrics. It is yeah. so. But that is actually slightly interesting, at least. Um, character assassination right. still, but. It yeah. adds a little depth to why she's doing what she's doing, and it's so quickly glossed over. Yeah, it would have been nice to not gloss over it if it was more obvious in in the show itself. Yeah, it's in the text, but not in the action. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. That's unfortunate. It was in the action in the London version where Madame Giry is like, there's a gentleman waiting in your dressing room, Meg. And then that the payoff is that those lines at the end. And you're like, oh, I'll let them put the two and two together. Hmm. Um, but that uh, that is still in the lyrics. But you didn't make the connection. I bet Andrew didn't. Most people don't because it, the lyrics go by real fast. But right. Sharon Miller Chip is playing to that truth very well. Hmm. I'm trying to defend the show. I mean, I think you're doing a good job. There were parts. There were parts I enjoyed. It, it was yes. all right at times, but at other times, it's bad. You were just, like you it's were like, very what bad. the fuck am I watching? <laughs> it's unfocused. Um, it is very unfocused. That's a really good way to define it. Like, let's take a look at the Phantom and his son storyline. So he threatens to murder the child at first. Yeah. Um, straight up, and she's like, how dare you? He's like, better sing the song then, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he just outright kidnaps the kid, because even though she was going through with it. Weird choice. And then the kid starts playing chopsticks, and he's like, oh, you're, you're my kid, 10 years old. And then he sings one of the weirdest songs ever written for a, bra- or for a stage musical. <laughs> Hell yeah, he does. <laughs> the Beauty Underneath, um, which sounds... Sexual as hell. In fact, when I first listened to the album, I thought it was between Christine and the Phantom. It was so sexual. Do you find yourself beguiled by the dangerous and wild? Do you feed on the need for the beauty underneath? Have you felt your senses surge and surrendered to the urge and been hooked as you looked at the beauty underneath? Where do you stare behind the night? Oh, 
What happens in this song? Um, beauty underneath. Okay, is this the one where it's it's him and the sun and the, yes, and he s- keeps saying yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Um, yes. so basically, what happens in this song is I correct me if I'm wrong. He is he just found out like this is his son. Yes, he just came to the conclusion that this is his son. So he's he was like, doing Punnett squares in his head and all that. <laughs> Yeah. And so he's like, do you see the world I, the way I see it? And the kid and says yes a lot. The kid says yes a lot. Um, and it's talking about the beauty underneath. But it also means his mask. Also means his mask. Um, and they're kind of just like, the way this is shot, it's absolutely beautiful. It's very yes. cool. You have all of these really cool, like, see-through, I don't even know how to describe them. Freaks like, almost, like... Like, yeah, well, yeah, there's freaks inside, like, these, like, very, like, triangular cases. It's very, the the way it's set up and shot is absolutely beautiful. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of, like, freaks and, like, cir- Cirque du Soleil type of vibes. And um, they're singing about the beauty uh, of the world and maybe the way the fandom sees the world, but also, like, the way the fandom is, looks under his mask. And so at the end of the song, he takes off of his mask to reveal his face to his son and his son freaks out and runs away. Does it bother you that you don't see the face in this show? I know we saw it a lot in the last um, show, but uh, it bothers me a little bit. Does it, Yeah, I would have liked to see his face. Um, but also, I, I need to know, why does he turn gray in this scene and nowhere else? What? Okay, he, okay, like, in this scene, like, after he reveals his face to his son, his ha- like, he, it looks like he has, like, a terrible bald cap on with, like, just, like, little gray hairs. Yeah. Um, and he looks super old. Oh, he has a wig on. He has, like, uh, he has a black wig on that he takes off. He is- Which, yeah, which I assume, but I don't ever remember seeing him take the wig off. Like, I just remember looking up and him having- like gray hair and i remember thinking why was that the only time i saw that um in the original musical he also has like he has bald hair and like a part of his head missing and you see brains sticking out like it's a real bad that would have been cooler like yeah (laughs) this just looked like a really bad bald cap (laughs) yep (laughs) don't know why they made that choice very very weird it was very strange. But not as strange as Christine walks in, um, gives Meg the child, says, please take him back to my room. Bad idea for like three reasons that you'll get to by the end of the show. Yes. <laughs> and then he talks, she talks to the Phantom who's like, you know what? I didn't know it was my kid. He ran away like you did. Uh, y'all should probably leave. And she's like, no way. I made a promise. <laughs> Not like you weren't just threatening my child yesterday. <laughs> right. <laughs> but because I, I made a promise, I'm going to stick around. And then she leaves him and they almost kiss, but don't, don't. But right. she leaves him and he's like, man, I got a kid. I got a crotch dumpling. I'm going to give him everything all my money because as you do you just say that out loud yeah. to himself and then madam jury's like all oh, the monies what about our monies and then that's how act one ends that is how act one ends and she's like screw that bastard like it, it's a bait and switch so you think she's the big villain when meg it really is yeah big, it's so right. stupid it's it's bad but that's how act one ends. And then we go into act two where they are okay. at the bar, right? Musical theater structure dictates the opening yes. of act two should be a big number that kind of just nothing happens. So people have time to sit down in their seats and they're like, uh, all right. 
we opened st straight into plot. Right into plot, right away. Raul at his bar stool. And he's just like, man, why don't Christine like me? I don't, or why does she like me? I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> and I kind of like the song. I think the song's really cute. Yeah, it is. It's a cute song. Yeah, uh, I, he sings it well. The gen mm -hmm. I think his name's Simon Gleason. He does a very good job singing it. Very well performed. Um, better than any of Raul's songs in the first Phantom. TBH. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like all I ask of you that much. <laughs> God, I don't remember anything from the first Phantom. Man murders a bunch. The girl's like, right. leave me alone. And then he's like, okay, I will. And then I guess he doesn't because sequel. Huh. Maybe I'll go back and watch it. Yeah, it's a much better thing. Maybe we... Hey, people on the internet, let us know if you want us to do a watch-along of the 25th anniversary. Me and Bree will sit down and watch it. That'll be yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, and then the sequel might make a little bit more sense to me. <laughs> I'm so glad you watched this without the context of the first one, because I I've mean, always been curious. I mean, it had a little context. Um, it, I mean, like, I got it along the way. Like, even, like, looking it up, like, afterwards. Like, I... I got it along the way because eventually he's like, you know, they kind of um, spell it out for you in song, uh, which is yeah, nice. It's nice. <laughs> um, it could have been more effective. Oh yeah. Um, but then Phantom shows up and is like, "Yo, motherfucker! I thought, bet you thought I'd you'd seen the last of me, bitch." <laughs> um, and he's like, "I've got a. It's okay. My wife and I have a kid. We're we got a perfect life." He's like, "Ha ha! I fucked your wife." <laughs> So are you sure that's your kid? How does it feel to be cucked? Like he plays keys like I do. Yeah. And he's like, no one would ever fuck you. No way. You're insane. He's like, am I? Gaslighting him the whole way. Yeah. Girl, <laughs> girl boss gaslight. <laughs> gatekeep. Um, what happens next? Because I honestly don't remember. I like that song a lot. And then I don't. Yeah, then the musical kind of pauses itself and Christine gets ready for her performance and she turns to her son and gives the, hey, I love you. How about we go and hang out after this show? Which means one of us is going to die. Yep. <laughs> like as soon as that conversation happens, it's like, well, one of you is going to die. That, that, that hanging out is not going to be fun. Mm -mm. That's not going to happen. Raul comes in. He finally fucking puts a suit and tie on. Dresses Thank like God, an adult. Raul. Does the bare minimum and is like, hey, 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 let's just go. And she's like, no, I made a promise. And if he, there, there was nothing in the rules that stipulated he couldn't explain why they need right. to go. Where she, he's like, I could have, I made this bet. We'll get all our money if you and I just hop on a boat. She'd be like, yeah. oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, let's do this. Right. Like, give the girl some context. Like, have a conversation with your wife, maybe. Well, you know what? Most problems could be solved in films and in theater with a little conversation. Yeah, or, or trusting people. Why doesn't anyone trust other people? Why do everyone lie to each other? No idea. Like, I don't think I've ever lied to you ever, Brie. <laughs> no, I same. Like, why would I? Uh, we're friends. I would tell you the truth. You know, growing up, my parents said, it's just easier if you tell the truth. It and is. I always have told the truth because I like the easy way. <laughs> so you tell the truth out of laziness? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Um, and then she she's like, I'll think about it. And then the phantom shows up and I'm like, ooh, pretty necklace. And then she's yeah. like, well, I got to go with the necklace guy. It's like, yeah, the necklace and the thrill of singing a song. And, and his dick just felt so good in me. <laughs> Free blast 20 times in one night. <laughs> Turned me I... into a full Twinkie. <laughs> this is... Yeah. Andrew I mean, would never let me get away with saying that shit. <laughs> you just laughed that off. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Are you going to cut out me saying that Christine became a full Twinkie that night? <laughs> no, stop. Oh, no, I See, with know. Raul, she's a toaster strudel, but with the Phantom, full Twinkie. No, please don't <laughs> refer to women as food. <laughs> please don't. TikTok has ruined me. Is it TikTok? That's Is where, it? That's where I learned those terms. Oh, God. I don't... What the hell is on your for you page? I don't know. It's mostly what my girlfriend sends me. <laughs> We have a really weird sense of humor where 
It's okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, Let's hear what Jake has to say. Call him. <laughs> you want me to call him? Okay. I also figured we could transition into some brief views because I also oh. pulled up some letterbox stuff. So you Fuck can tell yes! me. Yes. I forgot. So you can tell me if it's <gasps> one star or five star. <gasps> I'm so excited. And then Jake can come and talk about the music. It's Let's time for that. preview. Yay! It's time for previews. It's time for previews. Okay, <laughs> if I remember correctly, I watched this after my granddad died and could not watch <laughs> the scene with the gravestone question mark. Uh, it literally made me cry hysterically for hours. So what did I do? I watched it repeatedly until I stopped having a reaction. It took me like two weeks. I was so proud of myself. And I watched the scene in front of my parents to prove to them that I could do it. Fast forward to 2021. My horse fucking died. So I watched the scene again. Hysterically cried from midnight until 3 a.m. The musical has caused me a lot of pain. Five stars. That's one star. Are you shitty? <laughs> um, and that's for Love Never Dies. There's not even a gravestone scene in Love Never Dies. I think they're thinking of Phantom. I think they are. <laughs> one star. One star. <laughs> All right, I'm zero for zero. <laughs> this is just like when the movie based on Harry Styles fan fiction was released, but worse, and <laughs> catered to the 50 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> that's a one star, but that's a very accurate description of this. That is indeed a one star. And very, very accurate to how this got made. It is literal fan fiction made into a fucking musical. Wow, a lot of people rated this. Okay. <laughs> I'm just shocked. It's been 10 years. 10 long years. I reviewed this damn thing. 10 long years. After seeing Phantom Live in London on stage last week, it was time to watch the sequel. This really took the story forwards. <laughs> I truly enjoyed this and don't know why the show didn't run longer than it did. The <laughs> stage designs were magnificent. The songs and music were brilliant. Bravo. Five stars. That is five stars. It gave you an easy one. You did. You haven't even gotten to like the <laughs> insane people section of it. Hate how the Phantom hates this masterpiece. <laughs> what? <laughs> I hate how the Phantom hates this masterpiece. <laughs> five stars. That is five stars. <laughs> that's a good one. And that's about bathing beauty, I'm sure. Yes, I'm I'm assuming. So, okay, let's keep moving on. Moving on up, moving on up, moving on up. Give him the gun mag. <laughs> <laughs> That's a one star, but that's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ben Lewis's shocked Pikachu face in every scene is chef's kiss. Five stars. It's five stars. I agree. His face is the amazing and terrible and part of what makes this so watchable. His performance is not good, but goddamn, I love watching it. I, you know, I liked him. He did good. He did, he did His good voice time. is incredible, but them faces... I don't think this person watched this movie. <laughs> the people listening to this podcast. <laughs> this is the car scene, though. <laughs> oh, when the car shows up and drops him off. Oh, yeah! <laughs> five stars. <laughs> that is five stars. <laughs> That's a good one. Let's see. God, you know, 2,000 people reviewed this. <laughs> And they all probably loved it. A lot of them did. But there's none that love it as much as I would let the plant eat my ass and then fart out my bum hole. I'll never forget that. Me neither. It's burnt into my brain. Okay, here's one. In your opinion, what is Andrew Lloyd Webber's worst musical? And why is it Love Never Dies? That's a one star. It is. It's not his worst musical. Woman in White by Jeeves. There's a lot of other ones. This one I can at least hum some of the songs to. Right. Bathing beauty on the beach. Bathing beauty. Say, hello, look at my titties. A lot of people are saying that it seems like fan fiction. I mean, it 
does. It was a very there was a lot of traits in this that were common in fandom fan fiction before this musical came out. Like Raul being drunk, which was never a part of his personality in any novel until fanfic. I need to find good ones like you do. I do say it takes about an hour going through every all those letterbox reviews. <laughs> I guess everyone hates having fun because this musical absolutely fucks. <laughs> <laughs> it does again, again, and again. It is really bad. It is, I know, but I love it. <laughs> Five stars. Yeah. And it fucks. I agree. I mean, I'd watch it again. It is not the worst thing we've covered on this show by far. No. It's not even the top 20, I don't think. Andrew Andrew Lloyd Webber, I fucking hate you, girl. <laughs> One star. Yeah. Letterbox is full of like people that think they're actual film critics and then insane people and no in between between them. They did the best with what they could and that's all that matters. One star. It's true. <laughs> Love died in 1986, and I refuse to let Andrew Lloyd Webber tell me otherwise. One star, and I agree. I'm just looking at one stars at this point. There wasn't many five stars, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Come on, end on a good one. The set design was incredible. The songs five stars. are also really beautiful. But why was this entire thing written like a bad fanfic? And that sums it up, I think. I think I think it is. Looks beautiful. Songs are all right. Why the fuck does it seem like a fan fiction? We don't know. You know, if Christine just hadn't come back, I think people would be much more fond of this, where the fan fucks off and goes on a new adventure. Yeah, I agree. Like, just let Christine have her happy ending and the Phantom finds someone new. I would have loved that. Like, imagine if you found, like, a blind girl. Then we have some blind representation. We could hire some, like, actual, like, blind actresses. And it could have been interesting. <laughs> have me write your phantom sequel, Andrew Lloyd Webber. It would have been better. It would have. What is, what is he doing? He's slacking. He's trying to write everything on his own. And not good. No, he, he hired, like, seven different writers. <laughs> I'm going to believe that he wrote this on his own <laughs> and that seven other people were not involved with this process. He hired someone to write a book to base it off of, then ignored most of it. <laughs> they really take a look at How about we hear what Jake had to say? Let's let let's end on that note. Okay, Jake views. Um, it's not even Jake views. It's just like he was also there. He was also here, and we need another opinion because I'm like, yeah, it's all right, and I don't really form opinions. No, I'm just curious. This is just me. This is a bonus episode. We can do whatever the fuck we want. Okay, I texted him and said, "Come on in. Come into our lair, Mister Jacob." Hello, um, introduce yourself, Jake. Uh, no. <laughs> introduce yourself. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Bree's boyfriend. I'm Jake. Yes, and you were also forced to watch Love Never Dies with her last night. Um, I wouldn't say forced. You definitely did watch it. <laughs> I definitely did watch it. What Do you have any connection to the original Phantom musical? So, yeah, I saw the original Phantom, Opera, Phantom of the Opera, like, not on Broadway, but I saw it live in th in in theaters. On a know. theater, on a, in in a at stage, a at a theater. <laughs> and I have, and I, and we were talking about it. I was like, I do not. 
remember a fucking thing about that <laughs> that play at all. I was like, why? I remembered like it was Beauty and the Beast. I was like, yeah, no, like right. I remember that like he fucks with their dreams, but mostly I just remember like, <laughs> he the, fucks explo- with their dreams. <laughs> he fucks with their dreams, but there's like an exploding chandelier, and that's mostly all I remembered. That's what most people remember a fan of the opera. Yeah. So, what did you think of Love Never Dies? Love Never Dies is interesting. <laughs> For sure. I, it's like... We read a lot of reviews that um, say that it um, it seems like it was like a bad fanfic. What do you think about that? A bad fanfic? Of, yeah. of what? Phantom the Phantom of the, of the Opera? Opera. Like a, it it, it does it's... have some traits of like what Phantom of the Opera fans would write on fanfiction.net during the early 2000s. Is it like the My Immortal of... Yes, it is. Imagine if <laughs> um, someone took like My Immortal animations and then turned it into a full musical, and that's what this is. Oh, so, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what you know, I actually, we, I think, I don't know what you guys, if you already did your cheese ratings or not. but like, Not yet. You're, you're going to be there for it. Oh, wow. Okay, that was exciting. But I was going to say, for me, I think definitely that, like, it's the most middle of the road thing I've ever seen in my whole life, which I think is a testament to uh, his consistency as a, as a writer. And so I appreciate that about him. <laughs> so. You know what? That's fair. That is absolutely fair. You think it is on par with the original because you remember just as little. Exactly. I was like, I will leave that with the exact same feeling of like, God, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I don't remember any of that. You were very hungry. I just didn't care. I was like, yeah, she's pregnant or she was pregnant. It doesn't... <laughs> What did you Ugh. think of the song where he free blasts inside her 20 times? Oh, where he's like, she's like, and I touched you. He's like, and I fucked you. <laughs> yeah, like, that and one. And I loved you. He's like, and I, and I, and I fucked you. It's like, yeah. <laughs> where yeah. He, she where he finds him creepy. in the middle of the night and then raw dogs her a bunch and then leaves her there. <laughs> and then he's like, and then he's like, oh, like, I felt really ugly. It's like. All right. Your sh- uh, once Post again, it's clarity just, was too too intense. It's just it's just another example of a man letting his insecurities ruin everything in his life that's good. So for two people in this in this one, three if you uh, include Raul. Oh, who wait? Who else were we talking about? Because I was talking about Raul, and I was talking about I was talking about Raul and Mister Y, the Phantom. Um, what about the son? The son never got to live with his real dad. He got to live well, with the rich Vicant. Now he does. Oh and that's yeah, all he's there- got now. Well, no. now we've got to have a threequel where it's Raul and the Phantom raising the child together. <laughs> uh, two and a half masks. I, I told Bree the whole time I was like, what's her, what's her name? Meg. Meg? Yeah. I was convinced that she was in love with Christine and then she was in love with the Phantom. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I just missed that completely. I was she like, should what? have been in love with Christine. I, um, I, was, I was hoping for it. But. All right. Here's another thing. I brought this up to Bree earlier. Did you pick up on the fact that Meg was prostituting herself for to make money for the Phantom's theatrical experience? I'm assuming I'm assuming that the only because the only time I could imagine that was being alluded to was in the like ending sequence. Yes. Okay. Like because like she's just you know in my bed and da 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 da. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that is so, the only yeah. allusion to it at all. You're paying way more attention. <laughs> than Do you know what sucks is that I really wasn't. I was like, I was like. <laughs> I was like, just the app. Yeah. I was like, this is typical white man shit, just ruining a lady's life. I He's like, not everyone can be Christine. It's like, oh you're yeah, a, the most helpful jerk. thing to say at that I was moment. Like, I was, I was like, that, that is tr- that. Speaking to the microphone, love. That is true emotional intelligence right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're having a really bad day. Well, I really like this girl. You know, it just sucks that you like me so much. I just understand how bad that is for you, girl. So. Your exactly. ass ain't as fat as Christine's. <laughs> See, oh. Anyway, I love Christine so much. <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> but no, I did not pick up on that, honestly. But I could imagine that that was what she was talking about. Yeah, which adds a, a tiny grain of depth to that character, who I think was portrayed very well for such I a very agree. thankless role. I agree. I thought, I honestly, I felt like the stuff with Christine and Raul was maybe the least interesting stuff in the play. And I don't know if that's just me, because I was like, anytime they're on screen, I'm like, I don't care about their kid problems. <laughs> like, it just, like, this is not real. Like, it might, COVID's, like, ruined me, where I'm like, that's not a real problem. <laughs> they, could, they could talk about that, and this would be fixed. But, like, this guy's having, like, nightmares, where he's like, my son is too beautiful. And he's like, 
Like I was like, you know, that's like a real problem. That's like a real. That's a real person. Wait, 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 wait! My son is too beautiful. Do you in know your dreams? Really? We, we called it like three seconds before he said, it. "Is like my son is be- he is beautiful." Perhaps to be beautiful. <laughs> and she's like, does he want to fuck this kid? I was like, I don't know. And it's like, he sees the beauty underneath. And I'm like, <laughs> so we're just sitting there. I'm like, oh, no. Is he going to marry the baby? He's like, be with <laughs> you. He's like, will you always be with me always? Yes. It's like, Ugh. <laughs> Okay. And then he takes off his mask and the kid's like, ah, too much for me. And he's like, oh, safe. He's like, banana, safe word. (laughs) I'm out of here. I I, I did call that though. I was like, I was like, I'm waiting for this. I was like, that was the truly like funniest moment of the play. I don't know if it was meant to be, but it served for me. It it was was hilarious. It is. That's great. Um, still the nine minute song about fucking is probably still my favorite funny moment of the play, but that, that broke us. I think <laughs> I told him, I was like, Oh, I don't remember. Cause I was just, yeah, I was just going, it's like, he's like, and I felt you. Yep. Yeah, he said that seven times in this song. And it keeps I... getting louder. Cause they like go up a half tone every time it, until they're like I, screaming it. I would say, did you guys talk about how the music would, would like the, about musical storytelling in terms of like. No, we actually we didn't. Oh, you want to talk, Jake? We can. I was so I so I assume these songs have names. Um, You're right. You are correct. <laughs> oh God, that's horrible. Because I could not tell you. I that felt like a big long you musical fever dream. You couldn't <laughs> guess the last the name of the last song. The bathing beauty song. <laughs> oh, I figured. Oh, oh, what a peach. Um, <laughs> but no. So there's a there's a part near. When Meg comes in and is talking to her mother, it's right before, I think, the first song where we see Christine. Um, just the way that, like, they're singing, like, you can tell that Christine kind of has a more, like, a wistful memory. Or, sorry, Meg has a more wistful memory of Christine and just the way that she remembers her and that her melody reflects that. And then when the mother interjects, uh, the yeah. the note choice is almost like a, like a tritone, I think, clashing. We, we yeah. brought this up a little bit earlier, but... Yeah. That <clears throat> that Meg's entire little section there mm-hmm. was added because in the original London version, she just literally had the same thing as her mom, where she's like, oh, the fucking Christine's coming in. And then they're <laughs> like, that didn't make really much sense. So in the Australian production, which is what they wrote that little, you seem a thousand miles away, but now you're not. Like, that was just inserted there. <laughs> that was it. It was an executive decision. Like, they're not getting that part. We should probably fix that. <laughs> there was a lot of those in the transition. <laughs> I was going to say, this is not like a musical that either of us were familiar with before watching it. It was def- Which is I good. Mean, yeah, I mean, well, yeah. I, <laughs> that would have sucked if we had to watch something again that we had already seen. It'd be real sad. It would be really sad if you, like, went out of your way, like, oh, I'm excited to see Love Never Dies. <laughs> Love Never Dies. And then I'm just pretending, like, this fucking shit. <laughs> she doesn't even know what's going to happen in part three. <laughs> Like, in yeah. two and a half masks where oh, Raul and the <laughs> Phantom raise a baby together I'd watch that I'd be more interested in that story than whatever oh, this like, was Um, all right. So I guess it's time for what are your overall thoughts on Love Never Dies and our cheese ratings? Go ahead, Jacob. Oh, no, I, I'm I'm the newest. I need to see. How no, goes. no, Brie, you're first. You're okay. Andrew. Oh, I'm and you're right. I'm filling in for Andrew this evening. Um, <clears throat> so I should probably pick a cheddar because um, <laughs> you're lazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, because cheddar is good. No, um, because Andrew's lazy and always picks cheddar. Um, OK, so. I think Jacob probably summed it up the best is that this sequel is very middle of the road. It's very okay. It's all right at times, but it is very strange at times. Uh, The music is okay. It looks great. They they did a great job casting. Uh, Ben Lewis, great job at expressing yourself. I am going to (laughs) I am going to give this a a Gouda. Because it was 
Gouda. <laughs> wow. Gouda. That's good. <laughs> Jake, what about you? What are your overall thoughts on your cheese rating? I'm going to give this play, obviously, I'm going to give this play uh, three baby bells out of five baby bells. Uh, it was fine. <laughs> it, it was okay. You know, I think it, there are some definitely, there's some strong moments. I definitely think any moment that the count, what, is, he's not the, the count. count. <laughs> he count. does talk like the count, though. I have poor body image. I am um, going to kill your son. <laughs> it's like, oh, wait, he's my son. My beautiful, handsome, kissable son. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but so I, I think any moment that the phantom was on screen was definitely a, a highlight his his opening number is great yeah honestly and, and uh i think it starts off great um and i think it never really gets to that kind of height again so i'm gonna give it a any cheese that i eat but mostly havarti because that's my favorite cheese but any cheese that i eat is gonna make my tummy hurt eventually so only can i have it for a little bit that's fair i i don't like the show i still think it's a little more fun to watch than the first one um because it's a little shorter and a little bit goofier and Is it? stupid <laughs> it's shorter yeah it's a little shorter a little how long is the phantom of the opera about 245 mm-hmm. god that's just an entire synapse of my child memory i don't have anymore i mean you're not using it <laughs> clearly not so i don't we've covered this before me and andrew and a guest alisa um and and i gave it a nut rebel ch- vegan cheese because i think because meg went nuts <laughs> that i i don't remember yeah, um juliet good. did not leave a note but that was my cheese rating and i don't want to change it that's a good cheese <laughs> I'm too lazy <laughs> it's not too lazy it's just that uh, i want to stay consistent no diff- with myself that's, fair. that's very fair um, but thank you guys for joining us. Bree, oh, Jake, thank you, thank thank you, you for, for watching having this. me. Both of you. Of course. Bree, this was so much fun. I just love talking to you. I I, I know we love Andrew, but this, this is fun. <laughs> oh, we love Andrew. We miss awesome. Andrew. We Let's miss fucking get off the podcast so I can be on the podcast. No. Now. <laughs> Let's kill Andrew. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's kill Andrew. Let's kill Andrew with a gun on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> on a pier, come Sorry, on. Sorry, on, on a pier with my son watching. We can't all be like Brianna. Brianna, it's always <laughs> Brianna. That's okay. I'm going to be the one to die. You think so? What? If we all can't be Bri- like Brianna. Oh, oh that's true. Andrew's going to kill Brianna. That makes sense. <laughs> I can be pretty like Brianna. <laughs> The idea that Andrew gives a shit about anything to get a gun involved <laughs> is the funniest thing in the world to me. He's like, who said cheddar sucks? <laughs> who talks shit about Gouda? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go put our dog to bed now. What? All right. Okay. Thank you guys Thank for you, having Jake. me. All right, Thank time you. to wrap up this show. Yes. Bree, this was wonderful. You are probably one of my favorite people in the world, and I don't know about you. I had a lot of fun doing this and I wouldn't mind doing things like this in the future where it's just you and I for different bonus things. I, sure. I don't know how you feel about that. Um, I feel like I have to watch things more than once to form an actual opinion on them, but I'll do it. That's fair. We could talk about Cheetah Girls next. <laughs> I love Cheetah Girls. <laughs> I've never seen the Cheetah Girls, so it would be in uh, in your benefit next time. Yes, um, I would have to rewatch it again. It might just be like Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> What? <laughs> I got this confused with the Lizzie McGuire movie? <laughs> um, thank you guys for listening. We're on Spotify, Stitcher, all those places. Leave us a review. Um, next week, I think we're having another bonus episode, but the week after that, Andrew and I should be back back in business. Um, Looking forward to it. Yes, thank Andrew, you. Andrew, these are big shoes to fill. They, they are, and you filled them very well as... Thanks. I, it as well was a, as I could. <laughs> it was a lot to ask of you at a late notice, and you nailed it. And I am very appreciative of you, Bree. Thank you. Um, but why don't you guys go send some Bree some love on Twitter? Tell her how much you loved her on this episode, because I got a feeling this is going to be a secret fan favorite bonus. No. Well, maybe. Yeah, love never dies. You guys are surprisingly positive about it, and for a show that nobody fucking likes. It's not the worst thing. Yeah, it really isn't. Breed, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap this up? Uh, no. Stripes! No. Stri- polka dots! <laughs> we'll see you next time on Musicals with Cheese. Bathing in
beauty on the beach. Look at my titties, say hello. 